and welcome to Life in Envelopes. I am Jennifer Bleacher. This video is going to be jam-packed with information. So I wanted to share, uh, I wanted to tell you up front everything I'm including in today's video. That way you can jump around to the parts of the video that you wanna see. So I'm going to start by setting up my February budget. I'm gonna lay out all the stickers for the month of February. We're gonna set up the monthly budget and then week one's budget. We're also gonna be stuffing some cash envelopes and doing a savings challenge. So there's a lot going on there. And if that weren't enough, I'm also gonna be adding a section to the end of this video where I'm answering some of your questions. I get so many great questions on every video and um, I know that sometimes when I'm answering somebody, I'm thinking, I bet other people would like to know the answer to this question. So I thought going forward occasionally, I don't know if I'll do it for every video, but occasionally I'll take some time at the end of videos to, to answer questions from viewers. So that's what we're gonna do today. After all the budget set up, I'm gonna answer your questions. So before we jump into that, I do wanna give myself a quick plug for my new YouTube channel. I'm starting a new, a new channel all about reading and it's called The Rookie Reader. Some of you may know this, but I started reading books for fun after I retired from teaching. And uh, that's why I feel like a rookie. Because <laughs> reading for fun is a new thing for me and I'm having so much fun. So I've read a lot of books this month as I have found myself waiting in doctor's offices, waiting for a lot of appointments that we have. I've just been reading and I read more books than I think I have in a very long time. I usually read one or two books a month. I read eight books this month. Anyways, point is, I wanna to talk to somebody about these books. So I've started this channel called The Rookie Reader. I will put a link to it in the description box below. I hope you guys will head over there and check it out. I already have one video up all about the books that I read in January, um, how I felt about them, and whether or not I would recommend that you read them. Okay guys, let's jump into it. So the planner I'm using this year to do my budgeting is an eight and a half by 11 Erin Condren monthly planner. And the way the, her monthly planners work is you have a monthly spread, you have a blank page, well, a lined page, a dashboard page, and then you just have lined pages after that. And you get nine of those. So to set up my budget for February, I'm using the eight and a half by 11 budgeting kit for my Etsy shop. So this is the complete budgeting kit, which comes in two packages because there's a colorful section to the budget and then there's a black and white section to the budget. It's the same price for the whole thing, or you can buy each of these pages individually. So let's start by getting this all set up. This pattern is called pink and purple. to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we waited for Now that I have everything set up, let's do a quick walkthrough. First of all, I have my monthly spread with my budget category key on the right hand side here. Then I have a budget for my monthly budget because we do one monthly budget to cover some expenses and then we do a week to week budget to cover other expenses. Then I have my dashboard here and this is where we fill out all the information at the end of the month. 
If you want to see how I use this dashboard, I just made a video yesterday explaining how um, to close out my budget with the with January budget as an example. So you can go back and watch that if you want. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Then I do an expense tracker and a budget sheet. I do one of these for every week. So we have uh, week one is going to be February 2nd through the, the 8th. Week two is the 9th through the 15th. Week three is the 16th through the 22nd. And week four is the 23rd through the 1st. So our weeks are a little bit off based on when we receive our paychecks. So that's why the dates aren't like Sunday to, to, to Monday or however you might do it. Um, you gotta do what works best for you. And then finally, I have my cash envelope page where I figure out how much I need to take out from the bank for each category. Uh, I tried something new this week. On this page, I realized I could still fit these and keep the words open, so I tried that. I thought that was a little bit prettier than what I've been doing in the past. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the monthly budget. So this budget is based on David's paycheck. He's paid once a month and he's paid a fixed amount. So he will be paid $21.28 this month. So we'll have a total of $21.28 to work with. So his paycheck covers most of our fixed expenses, which for us are our bills and our debts. There are a few that his paycheck won't be able to cover, so we'll cover those with my week-to-week -week variable paycheck, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So starting with our fixed expenses, so the first bill that his paycheck will cover is our mortgage, which is $13.35. Next is State Farm, which will be $1.26. Then we have Netflix for $17. Metronet, which is our internet service, which will be $99. Google Fi, which is our cell phone service, and that will be $55. That's for two cell phone lines. Hulu, which will be $17. Then we uh, make a payment to our city every month. It's a fixed amount of $274. This covers our water and our electricity, and we're in budget billing, so it's exactly that amount. Next up is SUV, and that's $118. And then finally, Alliant Energy. And this is for the gas for our house, and that is $88. So altogether, this comes to $21.28, which is David's paycheck exactly. So this is a zero-based budget, which simply means we have a place for all of our money in our budget. Okay, now that we have the monthly budget set up, let's move on to the first week of February. Okay, so we're going to start with my income. And we've been holding pretty steady with the Etsy shop and YouTube. Thank you guys so much for ordering from my Etsy shop, from, for watching my YouTube videos. Everything you guys do helps, and I really appreciate it. Um, so I am going to be able to pay myself what I'd like to pay myself every week, which is $600. We also received uh, several Buy Me A Coffees last week. Buy me a coffee is a way for my um, viewers to tip me. Uh, I still feel funny about this, you guys. <laughs> like, even though David tells me, like, it's okay, they want to tip you, but I just feel funny about it. You guys, you're so generous, and we received $75 in tips, you guys. Oh, thank you so much. So we are going to put all of that towards our debt snowball this week, and I'm so excited. So all together, we're gonna have $6.75 to work with. Oh, I, gosh, you guys, I forgot to shout out my friends who bought us a coffee. So the big thank you to Deborah, Constance, Katie, Jennifer, and Cheryl. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to sinking funds. We're going to um, do some cash envelope stuffing in just a minute here, but I'm gonna write down the amount that we're gonna stuff. So for Amazon, we are going to do $3. For back to school, we are going to do $7. Birthdays, we are going to do 10. Car maintenance, we are going to do 10. Car registration, we're going to do five. Christmas, we are going to do 25. Sam's, we are going to do three. Vacation, we are going to do 50. And vet, we are going to do 10. So altogether, that's gonna be $123. 
So let's see, 675 minus 123, that's 552, <clears throat> excuse me, 552 that we're gonna have left to work with. Okay, moving on to our fixed expenses. So we're going to have loan number two. This is a debt consolidation loan and we make a payment, an automatic payment actually, to them every week for $142. Next up is garbage. This is one of our cash envelopes and Alliant Energy. Um, that is the gas for our house. So David's paycheck p covers part of this bill, but not quite all of it. So we also save money every week to help pay that bill when it comes up once a month. So we're gonna put $5 towards garbage and $10 towards Alliant Energy. So altogether, that is $157. So 552 minus 157. That is 3.95. So one of my viewers had an idea, and I'm still kind of contemplating it, but she said, why not pay your bills the, with your first paycheck of the month, and then just do your sinking funds with the remainder paycheck? I don't know, I'm still contemplating that. I kind of like spreading it out week to week. It just feels more doable to me, but I'm still contemplating that. Maybe I'll try that at some, some point. Okay, next up is our variable expenses. So we have food, gas, miscellaneous, and spending. So these are also cash envelopes, which we will stuff in just a moment here. For food, we don't actually do a cash envelope for food because uh, we, we shop at Sam's every week and we do the scan and go and then the, whatever we can't get at Sam's that I have to get from another grocery store I usually do grocery pickup for those items which is something that we have to pay for online so we don't do cash there uh, actual cash we just budget 200 and then we do $20 in cash for gas uh, we're going to come back to miscellaneous in just a second we're gonna do 50 for spending so that's 20 for me 20 for David and 10 for Logan Okay, so coming down here to other, we are going to make an extra debt payment to our visa bill. We try to make an extra payment every single week uh, to visa. This is the, the bill that we're currently focusing all of our energy on to, pa to pay it off as quickly as possible. So we're definitely gonna pay that $75 we got from Buy Me A Coffee. All of that will go towards visa, but also um, part of our miscellaneous will go towards visa as well. We need to figure that out, so let's do that right now. So this little game just makes it <laughs> just makes it a little more fun. Um, so we are going to either today we're going to either add forty dollars to to that payment or twenty or thirty. So twenty, thirty, or forty. How much we um, add to that seventy five will depend on the number that you guys picked. So I'm going to turn this around, mix them up, and we'll see what number you guys picked this week. Okay, so this will be one, two, and three. So this week, it was so close, you guys, between number one and number two. We had 25 for number one, 24 for number two, and 10 for number three. It's really funny because last week, number one only had two votes, and I had several people say in the comment section that they were voting for number one because they felt sorry for it, <laughs> which I thought was so cute and so funny. You guys are so funny. And I'm actually surprised that number one didn't win like by a landslide, but it was really close between one and two. So one is the definite winner this week. So we are going to put an extra $30. I think this is like the third week in a row where it's 30, but we're gonna put an extra $30 into that visa payment. So in my budget, I have $50 set aside for miscellaneous expenses. So from that 50, 30 will go towards visa and that will leave us $20 for miscellaneous expenses. For us, miscellaneous expenses are anything that comes up during the week that is not covered by another budget category. Okay, so let's see what the other numbers were this week. Number two would have been 40. I think this is the highest I go, right? Yeah, so number two would have been the highest, and then number three was 20. Okay, so before I run to the bank to get the cash that I need, um, I want to go ahead and update this payment, oh, it's not just 30, it's 30 plus 75, 105, what? We're gonna make a payment of $105. You know what, guys? 
I'm gonna make an executive decision here because my I have my um, my debt payoff chart is in increments of 10. So I am going to only leave 15. We'll do 15 for miscellaneous. And then we'll put 110 towards Visa. Oh my gosh, that is such an awesome payment. Okay, so let's go ahead and update that chart and then we will run to the bank and get what we need for all the cash. So this is the chart that I was talking about. So every week, um, oh my gosh, you guys. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> I thought we're gonna finish the chart this week. We need another 10 to finish it. It's okay. So um, the way we do this is I, uh, I make a pay, I leave that money in my account so that I can immediately make that payment today to the credit card, but then I also um, want to track it here on our little tracker. So today we get to do 110. We actually have 120 left here on this on this particular uh, sticker, but that's okay. We're getting so close. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add all these stickers, updates, and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so let's see how much we've paid off to this debt so far. So when we started, we had $4,500 of debt that we needed to pay off that um, for the visa bill. So each of these pages is worth $500. So we have 500, 1,000, and then 15 minus 10, so 1490. So $1,490, I think so, yeah. So, so far, uh, since we started paying this in January, we have paid off $1,490. That is so exciting. And just so you know, because people do ask, I do have some savings in place. We did these savings challenges first before I started focusing on paying off debt. So we do have a $1,000 cushion in our checking account, and we also have a $1,000 emergency fund in our savings account. So we do have those two things in place, which just makes me feel more secure working on something like this when I have those savings in place. Okay, let me run to the bank, get what I need denomination wise, and I will be back and we will stuff these cash envelopes. Okay, so I am back from the bank. We are gonna stuff $223 today. Let's count this, make sure it equals 223. So we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, 2, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 223. Um, by the way, guys, these smell so good. <laughs> I don't have them like open during the week. I just, um, I have them closed until I do my filming. So I just opened it. Oh, they smell so wonderful. These are roses, like Rose Forever roses. I do have a link to them in the description box below. They reached out to me a few months ago and we did a collaboration and oh, I love them. Okay, anyways, <laughs> back to money. So if we're gonna start with our sinking funds. So I recently consolidated these envelopes so they're much, much more manageable size now. So that's exciting. So we're gonna start with Amazon and today we are going to add $3 to Amazon. One, two, three. So let's see now how much we have all together for Amazon. This is for our annual membership. 20, one, two, three, four. So we have $24 saved for that. Next is back to school. Today we are gonna add $7. So there's five, six, and seven. <laughs> so let's see how much money we have saved for back to school. We have 20, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Oh, I'm happy to see that um, building up. So I do homeschool my youngest son, Logan, um, and we have to pay for our own curriculum, which came to about $300 last year. So it's exciting to see that envelope um, building up. Okay, birthdays. We actually have a couple birthdays this month, so we'll be taking some money out later in the month. But for right now, we are going to add $10 to that envelope and let's see how much we have to work with. I have my mom's birthday, and then I also have um, Logan's birthday this month. So we have 20, 40, 60, 70, 80. So we have $80 to work with. That will probably all get spent this month, would be my guess. Okay, next up is car maintenance, and we are going to add $5 to that. If this 100 looks funny to you, it's because it's a, it's play money. It's, see, it's 
blank on the back. This is just a place marker. We actually, anytime I have a hundred dollar bill, instead of having it on hand, I have it in my savings account. Okay, so we have a hundred and five dollars. Set aside now for car maintenance. Next up is car registration. And we're gonna put $5 towards that. So now we have 20, 40, 45, 50. So we have $50 set aside for car registration. Next is Christmas. And today we are going to add $25 to that. So there's 20 and five. And all together we have one, two, 20, 25. So we have 225 saved for Christmas. Next up is Sam's Club. And for Sam's Club, we are going to add $3 today. One, two, three. So let's see how much we have all together. 20, one, two, three, four. So we have $24 saved up so far for our annual Sam's Club membership. Next up is vacation. Jacob still owes us a hundred. <laughs> um, I might need to get a little more like, hey, you need to pay us back, but uh, it's hard. I have a hard time like making my kids pay me back, but I know I should because I know it's important for them to learn the value of money. Anyways, today we are going to add fifty dollars. So twenty, forty, and fifty. I just feel sorry for them, you know, and I. But that doesn't help them. That does not help them, Jennifer. Be a responsible parent. Okay, one, two, 20, 40, 60, 80, 91. Ooh, nice, so now we have $300 saved for vacation plus the 100 that Jacob owes us. That's actually $400 saved for vacation. Okay, next up is VET. And today we are going to add $10 to that. So that is 1, 20, 40, 50, 60, 60 dollars. Okay, so that is it for our sinking funds. Next up are bills. Okay, so we are gonna put $5 into garbage today. So we pay garbage every three months and we need $60 to pay it. So let's see how close we are to that goal. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So we've got 35 saved up for that. We actually pay a lion every month and we save $10 a week and after four weeks we're able to pay that bill. So 10, 20, 30. So we need one more week of savings and then we can pay that bill. Okay, so that's it for our bills. And then finally, we have our spending money. We have my spending money, which is $20. We have Logan's spending money, which is 10. David's spending money, which is 20. And then we have gas, which is 20. And miscellaneous, which is, oh man, I did something wrong. We we're supposed to only have 15, 15 left over for miscellaneous. That means one of my cash envelopes is missing $5. Which one is it? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video to figure out what I did wrong. So you guys will probably know before I know. But uh, yes, like somewhere it's something went wrong. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna answer some questions, but if you're logging off at this point, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see the answer to those questions, then keep watching. Okay guys, so we're gonna get into your questions. These are questions I received on the most recent video, but before I do that, there's one question that has come up over and over again that I wanna address. So in my sinking funds, I save $3 a week for my annual Sam's Club membership. Saving $3 a week is going to give me more money than I need for the membership. So people ask me, have asked me several times, why are you saving $3 a week for Sam's Club? You're gonna have more money than you need for your membership. Here's the answer. I, uh, well, there's two parts to this. First of all, if I only saved $2 a week instead of $3 a week, I wouldn't have enough money for my annual membership. And I don't do coins. Coins is just too much for me. So I do whole dollars. So it's either $2 or $3. Two would not be enough. Three is gonna give me more than I need, and I would rather have more than I need than not enough. 
Second part to this question is I do have a variable income from week to week and I'm not always able to do my sinking funds. So because of that, again, I would rather have more saved than I need than less. So that's a question I get quite often and there's the answer. Okay, so here is a, another question that I got yesterday. This is from Karen and she was wondering about health insurance, medical bills, savings for college, and retirement. That's a lot, actually, <laughs> but let's quickly go over all of that. Health insurance, when I resigned from my teaching position, I was a teacher for 20 years, and when I resigned from that position and started doing this full-time, my income decreased greatly. And um, I, at first, I had signed up through healthcare through, I forgot what it's called, but you can like register for healthcare yourself. And when I did that, they said that I qualified for Medicaid. So I am currently on Medicaid. I'm on Medicaid, Logan's on Medicaid, and Jacob's on Medicaid. David has insurance through his employer. The thing is, is if we were to get insurance for our family through his employer, it would be more than my paycheck of the month. So it's like absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's just crazy how much insurances for the family. So um, so we're very lucky. At this point in time, we have health insurance. Um, that may change in the future if I make more money, um, but I kind of think of it like, well, if I'm making more money, I'm okay with paying for my own insurance. Anyways, that's why, that's what we're doing with health insurance. Medical bills. So with my medical, with my insurance, we don't have any medical bills. Everything is covered. Uh, anything that's not covered, uh, we don't do. Okay, her other question, oh, okay, she was asking about savings for college. So Jacob um, has decided not to go to college at this point. He might in the future. He's very lucky in that his grandparents and his great-grandparents have set money aside for his college if he chooses to go. And if he chooses not to go, that money is gonna roll over to Logan. So as far as college goes, they do have money available to them if they want, if they choose to do that. Um, also too, I don't know, you know, as prices increase, they might not, might not be enough by the time Logan goes to college. So we may have to help out at that point or Logan might have to get a job. So that's kind of all in the air. But like I said, they are in a very lucky position where their grandparents and great grandparents had thought about this and set them up ahead of time. So I, and I recognize that not, all, not everybody has that luxury and retirement. So I actually have a pretty nice retirement from my teaching position, but I can't start drawing on it um, until the earliest is 55, and then I can start drawing on it from then, or I can wait, and like the longer I wait, the more I'll get. So um, I'm not that worried about retirement. David will also get retirement from his job, and we, my goal, is once I get all this debt paid off to have extra income instead of going towards debt to go towards investments that we can then live off of. Like um, I want to make, I want, so I want to have, a, I want to have multiple streams of income and in retirement the way I do now. So I might make, uh, so I'll have my actual retirement. I will have, um, Hopefully, and my goal is to have investments, and then I also will probably do something as a hobby that will make some money because that's just the way I am. <laughs> okay, so great questions. Thank you, Karen. Oh, this is another good question. Is this, Karen? oh, it's the same person, Karen. <laughs> another good question from Karen. Okay, she said, one thing I don't understand is how you come out exactly 200 a week for food, exactly 50 for spending, and exactly 20 for gas. Please explain. Okay, so let's take each of those categories. First of all, 200 a week for food, exactly. We don't. The answer is we don't come out to exactly $200 for food. Uh, sometimes we're a little bit less, sometimes we're a little bit over, sometimes we're a lot over. When we are less, so I don't take that out in cash, but when we are less, uh, I just leave the money in the account and consider it part of our cushion. I have a thousand dollar cushion, but I'm also adding money in different ways to that cushion, and that's one of the ways. So if we ever don't spend all $200, it will go towards our cushion um, in our checking account. 
Uh, when we go over the $200, then I have to account for it in my budget. And I have done that on several videos in the past. Food has been a real struggle for us. We're not always able to stick to 200. Although 200 is a lot more doable for us than what we were originally doing, which was 100 a week. So yeah, so 200 is kind of a magic number for us, but yeah, we're not always hitting exactly 200. Um, the 54 spending. It's, it's just exact, it's just I get 20, David gets 20, Logan gets 10. When your money is done, gone, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't have any more, <laughs> like that's it. Um, I give that Lo Logan his money, I give David his money, and then I have my own money. So yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's just easy to stick to that. Uh, the exactly 20 for gas. So what we do is every week or every two weeks, depending on what I need, I either put exactly $20 in my tank or I put $40 in my tank. So if it's been two weeks, I'll put exactly $40 in my tank. And this strategy has worked for us for the last couple of years. Like we figured out this is how much money we need for gas. Now, last summer, it wasn't enough, and we did have to put more money in our gas tank, and then we did have to account for that in our budget. But other than that, we just put exactly $20 in, or we put exactly $40 in. So I hope, I hope that makes more sense. I, I've actually been waiting for somebody to ask about the $200 in groceries, because I know it doesn't exactly sound logical that we spend exactly $200 on cash in groceries, and we don't. <laughs> We don't spend exactly $200 every week. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. Oh yeah, um, with so with my budget, you may have noticed like our income, I round down and our all of our expenses, I round up. I don't do any change. So like the, this drives my mom, who's an accountant. This, this system drives her a little bit crazy, but it works for me and I've gotta do what works for me. And if this doesn't work for you, that's totally fine. If you need to count your coins, count your coins. But the way I have it set up, and the budget mom does it this way as well as far as expenses and income go, um, is she does the rounding up and the rounding down. By doing this, you're always left with a little bit extra money in your account. So it just works for us. Okay, so that's it for your birding questions for this week. If you have any more questions going forward, when it's like gonna be a pretty long explanation, instead of replying to you in the comment section, I'll be making a video response at the end of my videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget that if you enjoyed today's video, to please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you all again next time. Bye, everyone.